Om Shanti. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so we are on this uh, listening to Baba Smudli of 25th January 1979, where Baba was talking about giving regard and receiving regard. And uh, just to quickly revise, <clears throat> Baba was emphasizing on regard for four things, regard for Baba, regard for knowledge, regard for yourself, and regard for all other souls. And uh, Baba was uh, clarifying, having regard for Baba means following the code of conduct of Baba and have all relationships. And Baba goes in depth, following regard for Baba means uh, following the father, regard for teacher is being punctual and uh, studying or all the four subjects and regard for guru is to forget all your body and bodily relations which means uh, so be, be soul conscious and stabilize in incorporeal stage so baba was emphasizing to have regard for baba is having all relationships to experience uh, uh, relationship of a father, father, teacher, Sadhguru, and a friend, and also beloved, right? And uh, Baba went in depth of uh, regard for knowledge is uh, unshakable faith in whatever Baba says, not to have any doubts or any, any questions. It is okay to ask questions to clarify, not uh, uh, questioning the uh, the very authority of what Baba is telling. Thirdly, Baba was talking about having the regard for your real self, uh, your eternal self, means stabilizing and experiencing all the titles Baba is giving us, So, which means the regard for our eternal self, So, which also includes uh, things like being Swadarshan Chakradari, uh, Gyan Swarup, Sniya Swarup, being angelic, and even today's, uh, uh, for you yesterday's uh, Abhyakt Murli also, Baba was emphasizing so much on uh, double light angel, be like Baba, follow the Father, follow every step, uh, Baba's steps, following Baba's footsteps, and uh, clarifying very deeply in uh, yesterday's uh, Abhyakt Murli also. So Baba was uh, mainly inspiring us to have Swaman in our own higher self. And fourthly, having regard for others. So Baba was uh, emphasizing on giving, uh, uh, seeing others with their, them also as God's children and uh, um, uh, also as the Brahmin souls. Uh, who also have this awareness and regard for all the souls, right? And especially in order to become a world emperor, you, you have to create a good record. To give regard to others is to receive regard. Giving becomes a form of receiving. You give one and you receive tenfold return. So this is easy, is it not? So those from Karnataka, so Baba is meeting uh, the groups after that, those from Karnataka are always embodiment of love for Baba. The land of Karnataka is very easy. The land is very fruitful because of their devotional feelings. And this is why service has grown so well. So there, Hridhe Pushpadadi was uh, there. She, her, I got a chance to show, see one small clip on uh, YouTube. Her way of, uh, and even I heard from a lot of uh, people who had a lot of Baba's children who were, uh, closely sustained by Dadi. Her way of uh, 
giving knowledge is not uh, of course she tells soul supreme soul who we are who we belong to what where we have to head towards but her presence creates such a powerful vibration whatever she is telling they get to experience it then and there and then she describes like this is what soul consciousness means this is what baba's love feels like and then that leaves a, such a deep impact in them that they cannot not be <laughs> Baba's children. So Baba is uh, uh, also recognizing that part. Uh, the land is very fruitful because of their devotional feeling. And this is why service has grown so well. According to the drama, the land of Karnataka has received the blessing of receiving Baba's message very easily. Special souls can easily emerge from this land. However, what do you have to do in the future? Whatever growth of service takes place, you have to interact with everyone according to their, according to your discipline. Whatever growth of service takes place, you have to interact with everyone according to your discipline. Constantly be a Mahavir in sustaining them with all powers. You have to bring about the speciality of maintaining a balance between love and power. One thing, interact with your discipline. And second thing, sustain with powers. And third thing, Keep up, maintain a balance of love and power. In fact, you are you innocent children of innocent Lord, the Father, are very good. You are good moths. Babdada likes all of you. Now, together with being liked by Baba, you also have to be liked by the people you serve. Okay. So, so, Baba is meeting the family. The Baba is giving blessing to those who constantly follow the Father. To the obedient, faithful souls who fulfill every order. To the constantly great donors, bestowers of blessing. To the world benefactor souls who enable all souls to move forward by giving them regard to the souls who constantly have positive thoughts for the self, Babdada's love, remembrance and namaste. So, I always enjoy this paragraph because this is the essence of whole Murli. It's a nice uh, uh, abstract from the whole Murli. Uh, so Baba says, to those who constantly follow the Father, to the obedient, faithful souls who fulfill every order, to constantly Mahadani and Vardani, great donors and bestowers of blessings, to World benefactor souls who enable all souls to move forward by giving them regard to the souls who constantly have positive thoughts for yourself, Bhaktadas, love, remembrance, and thing. So, Baba, in those days, Baba was meeting the souls personally. So, Baba was sharing here. Do you consider yourself? To be a holy swan. A holy swan is one who lets go of anything wasteful and constantly picks up that which is powerful. Holy swan is one who lets go of anything wasteful and constantly picks up that which is powerful. Those swans separate milk from water, but a holy swan separate anything wasteful from what is powerful. 
let's go off hasteful and pick up the powerful. Just as a swan would never pick up stones, but would always pick up pearls, so too holy swans constantly adopt Baba's virtues. They do not adopt the stones of weaknesses of others. Such souls are known as holy souls. They are pure and clean souls. The way of interacting and the diet of pure souls would be according to how pure they are. Holy swans have a pure diet and they are pure in their interaction with others. All impurity finishes because you are going to the pure world where there is no name or trace of impurity or anything unclean. Because you become holy swans at this time, you are called His Holiness in the future. You don't imbibe the weakness of others, even by mistake, and always have a garland of virtues around your neck. A garland is shown around the neck of Shaktis and even the deities. This garland is shown as a memorial of those who adopt the rosary of virtues at the confluence age. While imbibing Baba's virtues, you also look at the virtues of everyone else. Do all of you have the garland of virtues around your neck? Only those who wear the garland of virtues can become part of garland of victory, Vajjanti Mala. So check whether your garland is large or small. Those who have a virtues of Baba and others inculcated into them are those who wear a large garland. By turning the beads of garland of virtues, you also become an embodiment of virtues. Just as Baba is the embodiment of all virtues, so to you children also embodiment of all virtues. So let's take a minute. Try to absorb all virtues of Baba. Your peace, love, powerful, blissful, truthful. And try to observe all the virtues of all daddies, Mama and Baba. Try to emerge them and try to absorb all their qualities. Become like a holy swan. Okay. So Baba is meeting the next group. So Baba says, do you constantly consider yourself to be lotus? Detached while living? and doing everything at home and loving towards the Father? Do you consider yourself to be a lotus? Detached while living and doing everything at home and loving towards the Father? The extent of the love you have is indicated by the extent to which you are detached. This is a very powerful measuring stick. Extent of love you have is indicated by the extent to which you are detached. This statement took a while for me to digest. 
because especially when you love something you are very close and where you are very attached to that person or a virtue or a first quality and here baba says to the extent you love extent the love you have is indicated by the extent to which you are detached to what extent do you love the father what is the sign of that love you would automatically remember the one you love you don't have to make effort to remember the one you love if you experience this you can understand that you love the father the indication of love is automatic remembrance if you have to labor for remembrance then there isn't that much love wherever you go you should be celebrating the child yourself meeting the father when two are combined they cannot be separated from one another so to experience yourself being combined with him baba if you constantly see baba wherever you go that is known as being a constant yogi it should not be difficult to remember the father but difficult to forget him just as it was difficult for you to remember him for half the cycle so it should be difficult for you to forget him at the confluence stage no matter how much someone tries to make you forget baba you should never forget him be as firm and strong as angad so that maya cannot shake even the tip even the nail in the form of thoughts of your thoughts only such souls are extremely loved by baba this is an interesting interaction so one side baba says if you love you cannot forget there is no effort to remember you are always combined the one you love always comes to your mind right so baba also says the extent of love you have is indicated by the extent to which you are detached so now here baba is talking about when you have love for baba you are naturally detached from all the body and bodily beings so baba is making another group to experience any type of obstacle or tension in service means to lack a balance between the self and service very effective too if there are any obstacles or tension or stress in our modern terms there is a lack of self balance between self and service when you don't when you don't pay enough attention to yourself it creates tension or obstacles in service in one form or another when you don't pay enough attention to yourself it will create tension obstacles in service in one form or another it will show up somewhere or other together with making plans for service you first have to make plans for yourself can continue to serve while staying within the lines of code of conduct if you serve having come stepped outside of the line of code of conduct you will not succeed first of all create a committee of those 
who pay attention to dharana make plan for this amongst yourself and then service will easily expand first focus on those who follow this maryadas because in a short term you will feel lot of uh, um, outreach lot of visible success but in a long run it will backfire so baba says first focus on the code of conduct and then recognize who are those and then create a committee of those and again those who are also in code of conduct first focus on yourself and keep a balance between self and service baba meeting other group do you constantly consider yourselves to be a moth who has surrendered to the flame moths are not able to see anything but the flame but always attracted towards them do you constantly consider yourselves to be a moth who have surrendered to the flame moths are not able to see anything but the flame moths sacrifice themselves and merge into the flame they dive straight into the fire so to forget the consciousness of body and become equal to the father this is known as becoming equal and merge saman and magna the whole cycle has gone by now the blessing of the confluence sage is that we can become whatever you want only at this time does the bestower of fortune draws your line of fortune so create whatever fortune you want acha dimite sikhila de bachchan prati manupita baap par ka ya pyar good morning or namaste rohani baap ki rohani bachchan ko namaste इंट्रैक्शन to make yourself very comfortable in your bodyless stage experience the light by the stage the tilak Like a double light angel, like a firefly, fly into the light. Absorbing all Baba's virtues. like a holy swarm it's so we all the virtues of baba mama dadi
in your double light stage. Being part of our family, a Laukik, a Vyat family, that subtle angel. Absorbed in love, full of power. In Baba's love, Baba's light, Baba's power, absorbing Baba's sakash. Fully detached and loving, like a lotus flower. Combined with Baba, detached and loving. In full regard for yourself, your higher self, to your elevated self. Having regard for this confluence age, for, Baba, for this special time with Baba. Experiencing all relationships with Baba. As a father, a teacher, Sadhguru, as a friend, as a beloved. And becoming embodiment of Gyan. Keeping your stage and your awareness within the lines of truth. Anchored in the truth. We got for all the Brahmin children, Baba's children. being part of this Alaukit family. Returning home. Letting go of all the limited. Tapping into the eternal truth. Shanti. It's a beautiful Murli, very much in line of Sunday's Agnet Murli. Importance of the time, importance of all the beautiful opportunities that come with this beautiful conference age. All the relations that comes as a part of this confluence age. All these precious interactions we have with Baba. 
all the precious memories that we have with Baba, Dadis, and the Lorty family. And also meeting your higher self. And then we go for the time itself. So for the rest of the day, how are you going to use this alokic gyan and how are you going to make most of this precious confluence age, especially this present moment? How are you going to express your regard for others, regard for yourself, regard for the company Baba is giving us in this confluence age, and regard for knowledge? Be free to unmute yourself and share your thoughts from today's Mali. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Like when Baba just spoke about, as when the other day I shared, the regard for souls, there itself, when Baba said, I have to have the mantra of you first. And I have to also take the weakness or defects of others to be my own, instead of telling them and spreading about it, Baba said we should accommodate and transform them. So there he gave us an image as if we are the ocean. We have got a huge power of accommodation. And today when Baba spoke about another power, when he spoke about the Holy Swan, the discerning power, there he spoke about accommodation power. And here he comes to the discerning power which we need in us. And you see, these swans, you know, they fly also and they swim also. And uh, how elegant they look, you know, when they fly and they just come down to sit on the water. Even that act which is done by them is so elegant and royal. And, uh, and they flap their wings. I, I used to say, for what? Is it to rim all the things which they have collected or is it the mud of the water? They flap and then they settle down and then with their lovely beaks go down and collect the pearls. I always used to admire that uh, visual. But here when Baba is speaking about uh, specialities, I have to first see this kind of a holy swan in my thought, in my you know, in my thought, mind relationships and all. So I should know what are pebbles and I'll never pick up pebbles picking up stones. So just see if you standing in front of a person, you see them doing all defects, but you're not picking that up. You can see beyond that the beautiful pearls. So how clean I have to be how pure I have to be. What should be my diet? So what is the diet of a swan? How is that it doesn't pick up impurity at all? I was just wondering what should be my diet? And not only that, you know, when we see beauty in us, we see beauty in others. And if we see beauty in others, we become more beautiful, they say. So for that is because my color of the company is colored with his color. And lastly, in the Holy Swan, I like when Baba said, 
if you are a holy swan now, tomorrow you will be called your holiness. That's a new title, your holiness title. How do I get? If today I become a holy swan, find out <laughs> his virtues in others and wear a gun. I think it's a good relationship where Baba took us from uh, regard to others and becoming a holy swan. Om Shanti. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, so what is the food for the Holy Swan? Definitely Pavas Gyan, Murlis, but uh, the food for the soul is those experiences. Those uh, beautiful longer Constant experiences. Like it's not just like, oh, when I went to Madhuban, it felt good. So I should have a constant, uh, I need to feed myself with that powerful yoga, the good sense of safety, being in Baba's remembrance, stabilizing in the stage based on gyan, and then experiencing that stage. That experiences. I think is the food for this holy swan. So more I start getting a taste of it, more I will go beyond for the longings of this worldly experiences or bodily relations and bodily experiences. So I think uh, the food for that holy swan is feed the soul with that experiences. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Om Shanti. Om Shanti, Sanjay Bhai. When we talk about swan, it comes in the picture that even in adversity, even in uh, circumstances not uh, as per the expectation, it can take out positivity from there. And basically, the when Baba talks about swan, the first letter S of the swan itself tells that swan is always soul conscious. And as when it is in soul conscious state, always connected to Baba. And when connected to Baba, the next letter W tells that swan is always wonderful. And A, the next letter A, tells that it is adorned with divine virtues. And the last letter N of the swan tells about the nasha, that Narangi nasha, and the state of mind that is nirakari, nirvikari, nirahankari. That is basically the state of swan. And the swan is of such state that the mansa, vach, and karmana all are refined. And the most important as we discuss that the swan is connected to Baba, so is all the activities of swan is really adorable and like Bapsaman. And when it is Bapsaman, it also makes Baba Pratyaksha. And so as we are holy swans, and as Brahma Baba did Purusharat and make uh, Baba Pratyaksha to us, so at, in the similar way, Baba said that you're also holy swans. The first holy swan was Brahma Baba. And we are also holy swans. So we have to follow as Brahma Baba did, follow the footsteps of Brahma Baba. And definitely, we can reveal 
she baba also om shanti thank you nice afternoon anyone else i'd like to add um but brother you were talking about this diet of the swans see mm. i think it depends i used to think you know our like a uh, I had uh, I was saying are swans vegetarians, but uh, because do they only because what I eat even consumes or not? I know they generally they said swans drink a lot of lot of uh, water, but uh, are they vegetarian? Because sometimes they also feed on all these insects, tadpoles, <laughs> and all that. So where so where there is a pure diet, I'm talking about uh, the real physical swan. Not the holy swan, uh, so so it depends where they are living. I think so that also you can uh, categorize a swan. Are they living on fresh water or uh, are they living on salt water? Because uh, the food available over there becomes the diet for the swan. So don't you think? Uh, sometimes yeah. I ask Baba, Baba, but swans are not vegetarian, right? So how is that? Uh, you rate them as then Baba talks to us about he was speaking about diet of oh, so many. Ru Baba speaks about diet. So I had a question when you spoke about diet. Aren't mm. our swans vegetarian? I know I don't know exactly the physical state, but uh, that is true. The the atmosphere has a big impact on the soul, and we get colored. And uh, the physical atmosphere may or may not be in our control. But the atmosphere we create in our mind by what we are thinking and atmosphere we create within our heart by what feelings that is filling our heart and the, the awareness of whose awareness am I in, all these three things is totally in my control. Body, at the physical level, I may or may not have a full control. Or right now, there is nobody who is, uh, I don't feel that with so many Baba centers, everyone will have access to the center nearby. But even if uh, in the Western world, there are places where they, they have to stand on their own legs. So they're always surrounded by the culture, which is not very much Sato Pradhan compared to the Brahmin culture. Uh, but definitely the company where we, what we keep in our mind, in our heart, in the spirit, in our awareness, has a big influence on what uh, is, a hawk, is a swan coming out or is a stork coming out. <laughs> Yeah. Om Shanti. Mm -hmm. Actually, when Baba talks about swan, Baba doesn't talk only about swan. Baba talks about holy swan. Mm -hmm. And when Baba talks about holy swan, whosoever is holy, that means basically we have to see the uh, sukshma part of that, not the physical part. Because Baba always talks about a sukshma part. Baba doesn't talk about the physical part. Baba never tells that you are brother, you are sister. Baba talks that you are a soul. So basically we have, to, and as a soul, as Baba's child, we have to see only the positivity, only the uh, greatness of the thing. If, there is, if a person is having any negativity, we, as a soul, when we are soul conscious, we are not... Uh, connected to that negativity. We are connected to the positivity as Baba wants from us. So we have to be connected to positivity that is Ram, not Ravana. When we are connected to Ram, we are connected to the positivity of that personality. And when we are visualizing anything negative, that means we are connected to the uh, Ravana, that is body consciousness. So Baba talks us to be soul conscious, to be holy cons to be holy, uh, to be holy swan, and when Holy Swan connected to Ram and connected to the positivity, whether the uh, it is a vegetarian or non-vegetarian, doesn't, doesn't matter to us. What matters is the positivity of Swan. So we have to accept that positivity. Om Shant. Thank you, Sanjay Bhai. It's not that uh, 
I I was colored by that. You know, whenever Baba gives an example, I love really to explore <laughs> because there will be something lovely or about it. But yes. as uh, Harsha Bai just shared, you know, the atmosphere also matters. The sang also matters. See, that's why we have the disciplines. The disciplines, if it's followed, I will never have an impure diet. I needn't go and eat the tadpoles and all. I'll remain poor. <laughs> so yeah, I the disciplines are absolutely. Right. If I follow and I hold his hand, I I agree with you. See, I I always go a little bit too deeper to understand what that person. That's right. Harsha, I I love the last one. You know why? <clears throat> that flame. You know this moth and flame. I even when that song is run in that murli, it's it's something very nice. I used to think, you know, this is the moth attracted to the flame, or is the flame attracted to the moth? And uh, when Baba, I don't know in which murli, you know, he speaks about three kinds of moth. There is one moth who just yeah. doesn't decompose and goes to the flame and dies, die alive. Hmm. But other moths and all, it goes near the flame. Oh, it's hot, comes back, hot, comes back. Then it goes round and round the flame. Yeah. I have also seen that. Uh, that also going round and round and round the flame. And the third moth is something different. You know, when there are so many other moths, like a penguin story, I see a moth going round the flame. I go behind that moth and to see whether anything is happening to that moth, nothing. Okay, then let me also try. So like, you know, we like to see other Brahmins and all. We love, we want to go to the moth, but we also want to live. We keep our feet in two boats. We love Baba so much, so much. Yeah, but we don't like to die alive. I want to meet the father, but I don't want to leave also, you know. I love that moth story. When, and that, But here, what does uh, Baba say? Asking over here, surrender to the flame. Baba wants <laughs> us to be the first kind of moth, not the bing, bing, bing moth, and not the moth following other moths, like uh, putting our feet in two boats. I think that's also a lovely image. I don't know for which group Baba said, I would really love to know. That's a nice uh, example, which I always remember the three moths. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, see, there's a very good example in uh, Ramayana written by Balmiki. And the story of Balmiki, when the Balmiki was uh, honestly a dacoit now, earlier, earlier, but when he, he was asked to pronounce Ram, 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 he could not do so. So he was asked to pronounce Mara, Mara. Basically, unless and until you die from the body consciousness, you die from the attachment of the world then only Ram will come in your life. Basically is that you have to come and be swaha with your physical entity and with the body uh, consciousness and with the attachment of the world, then only you will be connected to Ram. You have to mara, you have to die, and then only you can connect to Ram. It is that that, that the insect comes and becomes swaha, and then you are connected to Ram. Basically what I feel it is that Om Shanti. Yeah, so what moths are we, Harsha brother? <laughs> ah, that, that is some, it's a good question. <laughs> good question to ask ourselves. <laughs> Am I, like daddies, if you look at daddies, daddies, when they first came, they're so mesmerized with Baba. They, they stayed in that awe until they left the body for 100 years. You know, if you look at Dadis, especially Dadis Janaki, she's always keeps talking about, oh, look, Baba is like this, that, he's like a magical being. She was always in that mesmerized state. And, uh, and, and then she stayed that way. And then she always inspired us to, we were catching her fire, you know, <laughs> whatever fire she caught in, like Baba's flame. She always... Uh, brings that flame and warmth to us. 
So I think dadis definitely are those moths who just die straight into the flame and then carry the flame with them. Um, yeah, it's a good question to ask. Am I fully dived in or am I just circling around, round and round? <laughs> Get close, I feel some warmth and then, okay. You know, I like, I remember one of the, <laughs> what is that drama skit that they did? Swarg mein ek seat kali hai. <laughs> Uta le re baba, mujhe nahi usko. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> keep this world a little better. I want to keep this thing going on. So in other words, I still have a taste for this thing. And I think that's where, where Baba was talking about being a lotus, being fully detached. How much you... And then re rest of the thing is all about... Re rest of that paragraph, he says like, look, if you really love, to the extent of love you have indicates... You have is indicated by the extent to which you have detachment. So extent of how much you dived into that flame is directly connected to her extent of how much uh, uh, there, is, there is no sar, there is no ras in worldly thing, right? So you, you go beyond the taste of this worldly experiences, how much it doesn't matter, you know, you know, once that Bizar was here, and, uh, you know, Western world, people have all this uh, public display of love, you know, they're kissing and hugging and all kinds of strange things they're doing. And then somebody pointed, Ali, this is long back. So somebody pointed, Dadi, Dadi, look, this is what happens here. She's so like, well, Kaliya, what, what, what happened? This is what happens here. <laughs> you know, she has no effect, you know, like this kind of place, you know, like Ravan Raj. She has no effect at all. So there is no hint of dislike or hatred or chi chi cha cha, nothing like that. Right? She was like, well, this is Kal Kalyu. And then she she is back in her blissful state. Like she paid because somebody pointed. She looked like, look, this is what happens in this world. Like, well, Kalyu, what else do you expect? And then she moved on. Right? In other words, there is nothing, there is no impurity within her that uh, is invoked when you see impurity outside. You see, right? And that is an extent of detachment, Baba is asking. Like, if you are detached from your own uh, weaknesses, nothing can provoke you. Nothing can trigger. Uh, and that is a state of detachment. And then you, you are so, so much in love for Baba. And then this, this statement I really like. The extent of love you have is indicated by the extent to which you are detached. Yeah. Well. Um, I agree with you, brother, but let me be very honest with myself. This is a very honest confession. I would surrender. I love Baba, but I, I would really love to be there because I want to experience his love. I don't know once I surrender, like, is it Aham Brahmasmi or is it absorption? Because I remember even Jagdish Bhai, I don't know if you remember, when he left his body, the one he didn't want to leave because one question which he asked Brahma Baba, for which he stayed for three days over there is, Baba, I have to still go to so many other parts of the world and reveal you. you I have not gone around the world. That was where he was taken a tour. So that time, I think when such a soul who has done so much, itna kuch ashik hai is Sangam Yukta, this moth, you know, being very honest, I love to surrender, but I would love to be there tomorrow morning to read the Murli, to experience his love till he comes, till he actually comes. Then nothing, uh, this is just my share, Om Shanti. Mm. Thank you. So, so, so Radhamani was saying something. In the chat, I mentioned uh, any love it. So when we surrender I and mine, we will become Bapsaman. Shabha, in the interest of time, shall we move yeah. on to meditation? Yeah. Ready? So...
So make yourself very comfortable. In your swaman, in your swastiti. Make yourself naturally detached from your limited sense of self. Very comfortable in your eternal sense of self. And just allow all your virtues, all your powers, and allow your stage to restore. Restore the stage of Sarva Guna Sampan, Sampurna Nirvikari, Sola Kala Sampurna, Maryada Pushotam. No sense of animosity, Ahimsa Parmodan. Allow your natural stage to restore. Become Mahadani. Your presence becomes a blessing for the whole world. Varadani. And stay absorbed in Baba's virtues, Baba's love. Stay in that combined stage, in Bab Saman stage, naturally. Total Vairag, the limited transient experiences. Total love for the eternal. Like a holy swan absorbed in and cherishing this beautiful confluence age, the company of Bhaktara and a locket family and your beautiful presence. Om Shanti Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you to Baba. Thank you, Harsha friends. Thank you, Divine Family. See you tomorrow at 5 a.m. Till that time, have a lovely day.